Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Just to deliver it, maybe you can keep your mind off of the dressing and turkey and whatever else they've got going on next door. But we'll have a great time in the Holy Ghost. And uh, we're just going to enjoy the presence of God here this morning. Mark chapter 5, verse 27. Mark chapter 5 and verse 27. The scripture said, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. I shall be whole. I want to minister this morning simply this. The Lord changed my direction as of uh, Saturday morning. And sometimes we wonder why I spent the better part of the week in my little office at times, a couple hours here and a couple hours there, touching God and trying to find direction in the Lord. Sometimes that was just for me, and today He has delivered a word to my heart, and I'm going to do my best to deliver it. Mark chapter 5 said, for she said, if I may touch but his clothes. And I want to preach to you this morning, you have a right to a second opinion. You have a right to a second opinion. Would you put down your Bibles and honor the Lord one more time with an offering of praise this morning? Praise God, praise God. God bless you and you may be seated. In light of the added responsibilities that people face today, you probably need life infused into your being and your family just a little bit more than maybe we did a few years ago. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad for the power of God that I receive and the Spirit of God that's infused into my spirit even on Sunday morning, Sunday night. Wednesday night, Tuesday night prayer, whatever you're able to come to, I believe the power of God is doing a great work in our church. The problem you face is that you think it is a sign of weakness for you if you need prayer and help from others. We have a little bit of pride, do we not? We like to think that we can do it all on our own and we think it's a sign of weakness when we have to ask for the church to pray. When our hand goes in the air or our name goes on a screen, it, it just feels like that maybe we're, we're a little bit inadequate. But can I tell you that that's exactly what God wants of us to recognize that we cannot do it by ourselves. If you've recognized that you cannot do it by yourself, would you give the Lord another hand clap of worship in this house of God this morning? So instead of finding someone with whom you share your burden. You keep your hurts in a safety deposit box of your soul. Outwardly, you are smiling. Outwardly, you are healthy. But inwardly, you are literally bleeding to death. Satan has attacked the mind of someone here today, urging you, as the song said a moment ago, to give up and throw in the towel. But the Holy Ghost sent me here this morning with this message for you to hear these words. I'm here to tell someone simply that you have a right to a second opinion. You do not have to accept the prognosis of hell. You do not have to accept the prognosis of man or the devil. And I am here to tell you that God's answer is always a better answer than what we have heard heretofore. I want you to give the Lord a resounding ovation this morning. I feel that we need to break something in the spirit today. I think we need to break something in the Holy Ghost this morning. On July the 4th, I preached here on a Sunday morning in the sanctuary. I got to uh, next door, and they told me that I had not preached long enough. All right, listen to that. So this morning, you better watch it. They're serving next door. I may preach a little while because they've given me permission to preach a little while. 
You see, someone has told you that it's time to fill out the funeral papers for your ministry. You don't have to give burial rights to your goals. You do not have to give burial rights to your dreams and your ambitions. You do not have to abort the baby that you're carrying. All you need this morning is a second opinion. If I walk into the doctor and they tell me that I have to have open heart surgery, I'm not going to say, okay, pull out your scalpel. No, uh, let's look at this. I'm going to say, is there anybody else that I can talk to around here? Is there anybody else around here that knows as much or more than you do that can give me a second opinion on what you have told me before the final verdict? If you have a medical test done and results come back positive, your doctor will oftentimes call in a specialist to get you a second opinion. Some of you have just related to your heart that you're just going to accept whatever it is and you're throwing in the towel and you're going to give up. But can I tell you as an individual and as a church, we are not going to give up this morning. We're going to press on. We're going to move forward. We're going to have a move of the Holy Ghost. And we're going to get God's opinion this morning. How many of you want God's opinion and not man's opinion this morning? In the judicial system, if a defendant is not satisfied with the final verdict, he has a right to appeal the decision. The defendant can ask for a retrial before the court of appeals. Let me tell you something about Satan. Revelation 12 and 10 says, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren. Satan accuses thus before the throne of God day and night. The word accuse here means to slander, to oppose with intention, to hold one down, to seize, to lay hold on, or to prevent one from reaching his full potential. If there's anything that hell is trying to do to individuals this morning as well as us collectively is to keep us from reaching our full potential. On the other hand, God God has all the power to allow us to ascend to the heights of all the potential that he has placed within us. Hear me. I've been spending all week rebuking hell, rebuking Satan, rebuking everything that is contrary to the word of God. We are on the rise. We are on the rise. It may be a struggle, but we're moving up. We're going to have revival. We're going to have people filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. But what hell wants you to do, those of you that are already have the Holy Ghost is to give up. I'm here to give you a second opinion this morning. It is not time to give up. How does Satan accuse us? I just mentioned that he slanders us before God. Revelation 12 and 10 says, he said, he accused them before our God day and night. He will also, watch this, he'll also slander you to yourself. Because Psalm 51, 2 and part of verse 3 says, My sin is ever before me. He's not going to let you forget anything that you've ever done. You try to forget the bad things you've done. You can't do it. You can't do it. He will accuse you and the Bible says, My sin is ever before me. He will also in John 8 and 10 he will accuse us to others. When the woman that was caught in the act of adultery was thrown at Jesus' feet, she was accused in front of others. And Jesus said, where are those thine accusers? He will also try to accuse God by saying to us, if God loved you enough, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. God, however, has made a way for us to appeal our case. 
For if we sin, if we miss the mark, we are not arbitrarily condemned. Our cases are heard before the throne of heaven. First John chapter 1, verse 9, all the way through chapter 2. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, these things right I unto you that you sin not and if any man sin we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous and he is and not only for ours but also for the sins of the whole world aren't you glad that we have an advocate this morning we have somebody we can go to that will give us a second opinion that has been called in to help our case This advocate, while our own good deeds may be unacceptable because of propitiation that which causes us to become acceptable to God. Now, I think our problem is that we need to change our focus. Now, pastor come to the house last night and he was trying to read something on his phone. And he's broke his glasses. And, and I said, well, all you need, he said, I think a screw came out. I said, well, all you need to do is go to CVS, get you one of them little glasses repair kits, put the screw back in. He said, well, I threw the arm away. Can't repair his glasses. But I think sometimes we need to change our focus. Now, let me preach a bit. Like many of us, the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 faced a twofold dilemma. First and foremost, she was bleeding to death. It was a silent death. But yet this death was very definite. Each day she felt herself getting weaker and weaker. And her second problem was just as serious. She didn't have anybody to help her. So let me say to you right now, stop feeling guilty when your name has to go on the prayer list. Stop feeling guilty about it when you have to ask somebody, brother and sister, would you bind together with me in prayer? It is biblical that we bear one another's burdens. This woman had two problems, and the second one was that she didn't have anybody to help her. I am glad that I've got you to pray for me when I need help. I'm glad that you can lift me up when I need encouragement, and we need to start doing that more often. She was bleeding to death. And she didn't have anybody to help her. The Bible said in Mark 5, 25 and 26, a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for 12 years, had suffered many things from many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Leviticus 15 and 19 explains the law concerning anyone with an issue of blood. If you had an issue of blood, you had to be set apart. You couldn't be with the general populace. You had to be set apart. This woman's problem had isolated her not only from society but her family and friends. This prognosis that hell has put on you tells you that you have no help and that you've been isolated and there is no use. Separated from the things that will help. Separated from the things that will undergird you and strengthen you. But I've come here to tell somebody today that is not the only opinion that matters. The only opinion that matters is the one that Jesus said. We have an advocate with the Father. We have strength that comes from Him, from our brothers and sisters. So if I need help, you're going to see my name on the prayer list because I need the strength. I don't want to become isolated from the very thing that will get me through the problem. The reason some of us don't break through 
is because our issue and our problem has separated us from the church. People make mistakes and they sin. They do wrong. But like Adam and Eve, they try to hide everything that they've done. And they go in the opposite direction that they need to go. And so when people make mistakes, they feel that if I come to church, condemnation will set in. Don't let that condemnation come from you and I. Because Paul said such were some of you. If it weren't for the grace of God, it would be us out there making those mistakes and trying to find repentance. What I want to happen is that when people make a mistake and stub their spiritual toe, I want them to say, I know exactly where I need to go. I need to go to church. I need to fall in an altar. I need to say, God, forgive me of my sin. Don't let your sin isolate you. Let your sin draw you to the one who can forgive it all. God have mercy. We church folks are bad about that condemnation, aren't we? (laughs) I think I read in that old black back book I carry around sometimes, the Bible says that there is therefore now no, no condemnation. It isolated her. Pushed her away from the very thing that she needed. According to the law, this woman's problems made it very, very troublesome for her to be around people. If anyone touched this woman, they then in turn became unclean as well. If she became tired and sat down next to someone, she would hear that person scream and get up and say, unclean, unclean. She faced that Everywhere she went. It was almost as if she had leprosy. The same thing applied. In her dreams at night, she would hear the word unclean. And wherever she went, she heard people whispering and gossiping about her condition. Making her feel dirty and inferior to others. The Bible says that we are to rejoice with those who rejoice. And weep with those who weep. It's very, very easy for us to feel sorry for someone and weep with someone who's worse off than we are. But you let somebody get a blessing that we hadn't got. Well, I think I think I deserved it more than they did. You let somebody get a new car and yours is about to fall apart. Oh, that's nice. You don't mean a word of it. You're lying and you need to go to the altar. That's the truth with my hand raised. Whether you believe it or not. It's time for us to understand that if you get a blessing, it blesses me because I love to see God do things. I don't care if my car's falling apart or not. Some of you got two vehicles. You know how many I got? Well, my wife's got one. I don't have any. I'm begging rides. Somebody will run over my vehicle. And I'm fighting with the insurance company to try to get it all out of them that I can but I hope you drive the nicest, best thing you can afford. I like it when you look good. Because when you look good, it makes me look good. And when you're blessed, I'm blessed. And when you cry, I hurt. We've got to get together and leave the condemnation outside because this place is a place of repentance. This place is a place of help. This is a hospital, not a nursing home. This is a place where people are healed by the power of God.
Somebody ought to rejoice in the Holy Ghost right now because the blessings of God are about to flow if you keep your attitude right. Leviticus 15, 28. I could preach on that all day, but I I got something I want to say. The law put this woman on a seven-day probation. The Bible says that at the end of seven days, if the bleeding had stopped, she shall be clean, Leviticus 15, 28 says. In the Bible, the number seven denotes completion. It's God's number. Perfection. The end of a matter. No doubt this woman counted the days down. Day one, she was thankful to get through. But by day six, just when she thought she had things whipped, she would feel the pain resurge in her body again. And the uncontrollable bleeding would continue. The people would then separate themselves as He was once again or she was once again isolated and ridiculed and her sense of inferiority became even deeper and more hurtful. She was dying. She was bleeding to death. Yet she had no one to turn to for help and comfort. After 12 years of the same opinion, After 12 years of false illusions and dashed hopes, she left her doctors and decided it's time that I get a second opinion. How long have you had the problem you've got? How long have you prayed for the same thing this morning? It's time for you to come to the master and get a second opinion about your problem, about your illness, about your salvation. It's time to come to him. Mark 5, 27 when she had heard of Jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said if I can just get a second opinion if I can but touch his clothes she said I will be made whole when she had heard of Jesus she immediately put aside all of her fears this woman's greatest fear had become her greatest need The only thing she wasn't supposed to do was the very thing she ultimately did. (laughs) The very thing that hell don't want you to do is the very thing that you need to do. Hell don't want you to lift your hands this morning when you've got the problem you've got. Hell don't want you to get up out of that pew and come to this altar this morning with the problem you've got. Hell wants you to stay home and bleed to death. Hell wants you to hear his opinion. He don't want you to hear God's opinion. He don't want you to touch the hem of God's garment. He don't want you to say, God, I'm sorry. He don't want you to lay your infirmity upon the altar. He wants you to stay the way that you are and die in your condition. The law said, do not touch anyone or anything. And when this woman came to Jesus, she chose to forget the word unclean. She chose to break the rules and rehearse the words in her mind, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. Prior to 1994, Dodge had the ugliest truck ever known to man produced on the assembly lines prior to 1994. In 1994, they decided to do a drastic redesign on their pickup trucks. And it went to looking from looking anemic to looking like a truck. Back then, I don't remind me of that. Now, back then, when it come out, I was like, boy, it almost looked like an 18-wheeler. And that old 12-valve Cummins, it rattled just like a big rig. Pull up to McDonald's, you had to cut it off so you could place your order. But you just driving one of those kids, you just felt like a man. Wasn't no rice burner here. This was American muscle. (laughs) 
this was it. I wanted one so bad. I didn't get a Dodge truck until about 2001. And I bought a used 1998 one. Boy, I liked it. It was white. Had them big old fenders look like a man's truck. I've owned several since then. I like them. That one, that guy hit me. Hit me. That was a Dodge. It felt like a man's truck. You know what their advertising slogan was in 1994? Their advertising slogan was, the rules have changed. I think I remember where in science class I, I heard that what goes up must come down. I heard that. And I think I remember an English class where they said, I before E, except after. Y'all didn't go to English? Except after C. That I and E, either, either, received, receipt, a little tough to figure out sometimes. The rules have changed. And I remember in Joshua chapter 10 verse 13 where Adonai Bezek gained some allies. Four other kings came together and there were five kings warring against Israel. And so the Bible says that hailstones fell. And the Bible also says that the hailstones killed more of the enemy than Israel did with the sword. And it also said for Israel to have enough time to avenge themselves of their enemies, the day was about to close out. And the rule said, the sun don't stop. But they prayed, and the Bible said that the sun stood still. For a whole day. So that Israel could defeat the enemy. They needed time. So if a God that is willing... To allow Israel to avenge their enemies and make the sun do something that the Bible said it had never done before and it will never do again. This was a one-time thing. And you think that your problem is too big for a God like that. And so you're willing to sit around and bleed to death because you've got too much pride to say, God, I need the sun to stand still in my life. I don't care if everything that goes up is supposed to come down. You can suspend it for a little while. Woman, that's not for me to give the meat that are supposed to go to the children to dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table he said I'll tell you what I'm the one that made the rule and if I made the rule I can set the rule aside and I can change you and then put the rule back in place Lord remember me remember me when you enter into your kingdom this was one of the thieves that were hung on the cross beside Jesus. Remember me, Lord. Still living under law. Grace hadn't happened yet. But the one that created the rule, he said the veil hadn't been rent yet. But Jesus Christ stepped out of the law and stepped into grace. And he said this day, Shalt thou be with me in paradise. Then he stepped back across into law. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And he gave up the ghost and died. If God can do that for a thief on a cross, 
how much more can he do for us if we'll give our bleeding condition, if we'll give our problem, if we'll lay it on the altar and say, God, this is yours. I have a right to a second opinion. I'm not going to listen to what you say about me. I'm not going to listen to what hell says about me. I'm not going to listen to what everybody else is quoting and saying about me. I believe that Jesus Christ is here to give somebody a second opinion. Her focus changed from what people thought of her to what Jesus could do for her and she's let her eyes fall on the hem of his garment. The hem of the garment is the the last part of the garment. It's a place where all the loose ends are tied and sewn together. The hem of the garment is a place that holds everything else together. And the garment would otherwise unravel if it didn't have a hem in it. You have a life. You have a family. You might have a ministry. You may have a gift, a calling, maybe even a marriage that's unraveling because of an issue that caused you to bleed. It now has gotten so bad that your life is coming apart at the seams. My challenge to you today is I'm here to give you a second opinion. And you need to do something that maybe, maybe your personality is not comfortable with. It's time for you to touch Jesus. It's time for you to touch the hem of Jesus' garment. He can suture the wound. He can stop the bleeding. He can infuse and even transfuse new life and healing into your very being. It's time for you to break the rules. It's time for you to break the rules because Jesus said, I'll change the rules just for you. I'll change the rules just for you. For a moment of time, I'll give you what you need. On the day that this woman entered the crowd, many other people were accidentally brushing up against Jesus, and you've heard it preached. This woman came with a desire to detach herself from the issue that was out of control and attach herself to the hem of a garment that would make everything all right. Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 through verse 34. The Bible says that when she touched the hem of his garment, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that the virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude, Lord. There's, there's so many people touching you. And, and, and you you're, you've still got the gall to say, Who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. See, as she touched him, Jesus was moved. Why was he moved? Because he felt 12 years of brokenness. He felt 12 years of waiting. 12 years of isolation. 12 years of loneliness and despair. And he was moved by her touch that he just touched her back. And he touched her until her issue subsided. He touched her until she felt it. The word touch actually means one who can relate to you by going through what you're going through. Hebrews 4, 4 through 16, 14 through 16 tells us that Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. I'm hurrying to a close. Before you allow fate to slam the gavel of man's opinion down against you, And before you call the family of God around your bedside to relinquish your assets, you need a second opinion. God have mercy. Make your appeal to Jesus because he is your counselor. 
Make your appeal to Jesus because he is the great physician. Even if what they say about you is true. He is the God of second chances. Guess what? He's also the God of third chances. He's also the God of sixth chances. He's also the God of a hundred chances. He didn't die on the cross just to give you one chance. No, no. He'll give you as many chances as you're sincere enough about to come and say, God, here I am. You need a second opinion. You need a second opinion. He gives the invitation. He stands at the door, chores of your destiny. He's built the fire. He still gives the invitation. He knows how it hurts. He sees your bleeding. He knows that your problem has become a real issue in your life. John chapter 12, verse, chapter 21, rather, verse 4. And when morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto them, children, have you any meat? And they answered, no. And he said unto them, cast your net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. And they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for a multitude of fishes. Therefore, watch this, that disciple whom Jesus loved, that was John, said to Peter, it is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked. He probably got a little mad at John for writing this. John, why'd you have to tell him I was naked? You, you didn't have to tell him that. The Bible said he was naked. He put on his clothes. And then he jumped into the sea. Like the woman with the issue of blood, Peter was desperate. And he knew that it was his time to act. And he just jumped. That's kind of Peter's personality. Remember in the garden? Before anybody got a chance to say a whole lot, he whooped out his sword and cut off Malchus's ear. He was always leaping before he looked. But he was also the one that Jesus said, I want you to preach on the day of Pentecost. Here's the keys. I'd much rather have somebody that was gung-ho and not afraid to step out against what the rules say. He plunged into the sea. Unlike some of us. Well, preacher, how, how cold's the water? How deep is it? I don't know. I can't touch bottom. What's the barometric pressure? Is it supposed to rain? Unlike Peter, most of us, we, for us to move, for us, the condition's got to be just right. God, I pray for a church full of people. That all he had to do was, John said, well, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Here I go. No, some of y'all, we got to bring out a commentaries and, and preach something that will wow you and surprise you and question you. No, this has been simple this morning. All I want to know is do you know that Jesus is here and all you got to do is touch the hem of his garment. Here I go, John. All the other fishermen, I don't care what they think about me. I just need Jesus. He made an offer and I need him immediately. Is there anybody that needs Jesus? this morning. Sometimes you got to reach out and break the rules. Sometimes he'll stop the sun in the sky just for you. Sometimes he'll give you meat that you're not supposed to be eating just because you got a daughter that's sick. He wants to do it this morning. Is there anybody that wants a second opinion today? I 
I don't know what's going on in your life, but Jesus Christ has another opinion. Jesus Christ has another word for you today. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ has another word. Bless these that have come. Bless these that have jumped out of the boat. Bless these that are not afraid to touch the hem of this garment. Bless these that has put aside their isolation and fear. Be the same. Hallelujah. And there God have is mercy. only oh, one way to, to touch, touch him. him. Oh, yes. Just, Just believe when you call on his name. Touch him, Jesus.
touching Jesus is all that really matters. Then your life will never be the same. And there is only one. everybody in this room today would you just stretch forth your hands toward heaven come on we got folks praying in the altar we need to break every chain everything that binds come on let there be freedom in this place come on we're helping our brothers and sisters we need to help them break through help them break through the barriers in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. to hear a second opinion this morning you're going to make it you're going to overcome you're going to be healed you're going to be delivered this is not the end of your life this is just the beginning of the rest of your life thank God for another opinion amen 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 the devil looks at us and said you're not supposed to be here I claimed you years ago but you're back because you got another opinion it's not over yet God's not through let's thank the Lord for the word let's thank God for the message we've heard and let's hold on to what God is doing Heavenly Father thank you for the man of God that has preached this morning opened his heart delivered his soul Enable us to go forward, Lord, accepting and receiving the opinion of the Holy Ghost that has spoken to our hearts this morning. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you. Greet someone in the name of the Lord. God has done a work in this, this building.